Let's take you live to Kabul now, where Taliban spokesman Zabihullah Mujahid is holding a news conference. Let's listen in to what he has to say. My people that they bear this situation and they didn't leave us alone in this critical situation and helped in making the government and forming the government. I thank them for their patience. The Panjshir province, which was the nest for the final nest for the enemy of Afghanistan, which has been cleared today completely, and all Afghan forces have presence there. We were trying our best to not continue the war. Where Kabul was taken over, we want that to be the end of the war. We didn't want to see any more fighting in the country. But unfortunately, a number of people that they fled with a number of people's property and ammunitions, <laughs> They went to the Panjshir Valley and they wanted to disrupt the safety and security of the people of Afghanistan from there. They should have thought about the reconstruction of their own country rather than putting us into challenges. The Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan wants to uh, negotiate this matter and resolve this matter, negotiations and dialogue. <coughs> and the, uh, the jihadi commanders in Parwan and Panjshir and all those who were involved in this war, they were used in this uh, to, to resolve this matter through negotiations and dialogue. But unfortunately, those who fled to there, they were still thinking to cause problem for the nation and cause problem for the country. When our delegations went there, they received negative answers and they couldn't resolve the matter through negotiations and dialogue. So the Islamic Emirates uh, decided to send their uh, military forces to get rid of this, the final nest of the terrorism. We want peace to our country. And if anyone, if anyone cause problem or cause insecurity and insafety in any point of Afghanistan, the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan will take categoric decision and will not allow anyone <coughs> to congregate, to get together and, and act against our government. In relation to the um, foreign troops, after, after the occupation, Afghanistan should be a place of reconstruction and rebuilding. I hope the nation help us in this process and hope God will help us as well. And anyone pick up arms and start resistance. Okay, if you're just joining us, it seems we've lost translation, but we're just hearing a press conference from the Taliban spokesman Zahibullah Mujahideed. I believe we have translation. Let's continue to listen in. Therefore, we hope the nation is with us and we help the nation to help us. And we still require the cooperation and assistance of our 
The second point is that I would like to um, thank our Mujahid nation, who was part of our body and our soul, and also our Panjshiri. We can't even imagine that ordinary members of the Panjshir, Mujahideen of Panjshir, those who have lived in that uh, honorable and proud valley, we don't want to harm them in any way. And those people who were using the name of that valley and the name of the pal uh, people in e with evil intentions, and they were trying to create a, a prejudice. We want to repeat that the people of Panchil, exactly the same like people of Herat and Kandahar and Kabul and Mazar Sharif, uh, are respectable for us. And we will not treat people differently. Our Panchiri brother, brothers will uh, have the same respect as exactly the same like other people in the country. The people of Panjshir, the governor of Panjshir is from Panjshir itself. The deputy governor is will be from Panjshir as well. In order to um, the forces that they were sent to Panjshir for safety and security and peace and are, have been selected from those uh, groups that they are acceptable for by all. Uh, we didn't have any civilian casualties uh, during the um, taking over uh, Panjshir by military forces. As a result of the fightings, there was a shortage of food or medication uh, in Panjshir. And from now on, um, uh, food to Panjshir uh, province, and also the telephone communications will be uh, reconnected uh, to the province. Uh, those people have left the country and only to uh, save themselves, their, save their lives. Um, we want to assure all the um, security forces in the country that the Islamic uh, Republic of Afghanistan, the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, I want to assure the people, in, in particular people in Kabul, that our forces are in every part of the city and country, and they have total control over the whole country. They want to stop thieves and robbers, those people who do not have uniforms, they are not allowed in the city, or they will be removed from the city. They cannot interfere with government affairs. In the past few hours, about 340 thieves and uh, burglars have been uh, captured in the Kabul city. Uh, those people who stop people's cars, got into people's houses and robbed people, they have all been captured in the uh, Kabul city. And also, two or three days ago, we came across with an incident that people were shot, uh, firing shots in the air. And as a result, many people were um, uh, killed and got injured. And people's uh, um, uh, comfort and safety was disturbed. In this uh, regard, also about 80% of people who were shot in the air have been arrested, and uh, because they uh, misused the property of the people and the government by uh, firing shots in the air. Who are, and have taken full control over the situation, and we have announced that nobody can fire shots in the air anymore. 
Because people cannot hear one more shot. The sound of one more shot in the air is too much for the people to hear. <coughs> the Kabul airport is one of the most important airports in the country. Uh, um, serious steps have been taken in order to put um, put the Kabul airport back into function. Um, uh, the Qatar country and um, Turkish government are very busy there to make the Kabul airport operational. Domestic flights have already started, and we are just waiting to um, hear when can we start um, overseas flights. There are some uh, technical side and uh, putting the radar system back in place. And we want people to be a little bit patient with us. Start the overseas flights uh, very soon. And some people noticed this was used for domestic, for commercial and military purposes. And when Americans left, they badly damaged the airport. Um, uh, airplanes and also even the radar system was dismantled and damaged badly. This was the final animosity towards our country and people. And our people should remember and also the media should remember the, the occupation, the occupiers never build our country. They can never build our country. We will think that the occupiers can build our country. That's a, a, a wrong um, interpretation. The invaders are here to destroy our country. But we, in fact, we should take the responsibility of uh, reconstruction and building our country ourselves. In the meanwhile, that the reconstruction and rebuilding and repair of the Kabul airport is ongoing. Uh, um, also, we have been receiving um, um, humanitarian aids from the uh, foreign countries, uh, like food and medication. Uh, many countries have uh, made humanitarian assistance uh, to our country, and they are doing their best to uh, help us. Uh, their food, medication, and other stuff that they have helped to our country. Uh, so it will be and it will be distributed to people. And I would like to thank our neighboring countries and also ask our neighboring countries and international community to not stop their humanitarian assistance to Afghanistan. I would like to assure the international community that uh, and I would like to ask them to help us to rebuild Afghanistan at its best condition. Um, it will take time to receive their humanitarian assistance. Uh, will, will be received in Afghanistan, and the business and trade will start um, slowly. The situation will get better, and we do our best that the situation get back to normal slowly. 
دا به انشاءالله په اقتصادي ډګر کې زموږ تاسو د کرنسۍ د نف ساتلو لپاره د نورو the the currency rate and regards to the currency rate the rate of the afghani is stable and uh, we start to um, operate that channel as well so people will transfer money and receive money from overseas uh, we know that the, there's another situation that the, the, there's another problem that the the poverty and the economical uh, situation of the people. Um, hopefully, we have this opportunity to, that uh, we have peace in the country. Hopefully, the situation will get better and the economy will improve and people will be out of the problem, poverty. And we hope that uh, we have a strong economy. Uh, the, Yes, it seems we've lost that translation. If you are just joining us, uh, we're just watching a press conference uh, being held by the Taliban spokesman Zabihullah Mujahid in Kabul. Uh, we can go back to uh, the translation. Let's listen in. Of the economy of the country. You shouldn't have any concerns and worries, and we will have uh, relationships with the um, international community um, in this regard. Um, I ask uh, names, and you can ask your questions, please. Uh, I'm Ahmed Shah from the Pajwak Air, uh, News Agency. We heard that the Pajwak has been taken over completely. Where are those people at the moment? And also, how much damage has been inflicted to the Kabul airport? Uh, Panjshir has been cleared, and religious clerics and elders are in contact with Panjshir. And those people who were in control of Panjshir, they are missing at the moment. I can still tell them that Afghanistan is their, their home. They can come back to Afghanistan anytime they want. And this is their country. If they have left the country, they can come back to Afghanistan. It is told that Hamr al has been has escaped to the Tajikistan. And also, in relation to the airport, Kabul airport, the, the damage to the Kabul airport is huge. As I mentioned, that the um, technical side of it, the radar has also has been damaged and it needs time to be repaired. Shamshat um, TV. At the moment that Panjshir is under control of the Emirate, Islamic Emirate, how, when will you um, announce your government and we have we received videos and footages that they were defeated uh, during this war. And will this, will this be an all-inclusive government? Uh, the, the, the decisions have been taken and has been finalized to announce the government. Uh, we want to do a, a proper job when we announce the government. And uh, I don't know the details of it yet. There were old weapons and new weapons and also taken from Kabul to Panjshir. All those weapons will be returned to the um, weapons cache in Afghanistan and to belong to the government of Afghanistan. Thank you very much, Mr. Mujahid. 
This one inclusive government, what does it mean? And also the, after the announcing the um, um, national amnesty, If you could give us some information about that. First of all, I want to give you some information about the, once we announce the government and then we'll give you detailed information about the, the structure of the government. And it will be an all-inclusive government because the, the changes that the, uh, needs to be made uh, hopefully, I will be able to answer this question after I announce the government. What was the next question? We don't have any reports that somebody has been arrested. We, we uh, in regards to control the situation um, in in Kabul, we have uniformed uh, personnel in Kabul to ensure the safety and security uh, in uh, Kabul and stop and arrest and investigate uh, matters which uh, causes disturbance to the people. And uh, once the government is announced, and then, then the government will decide what it will do with those um, burglars or thieves or um, criminals. From the Tamadun TV, you haven't specified the date which you were going to announce the new government. Uh, the new government was due to be announced on Friday. Uh, what will, what will be the new system or the government like? Those people, those organizations or those parties that you fought against, what will be the fate of those people who fought against for the past 20 years? Will they have a part in the Taliban's government? The military personnel that they had received training in the past, hopefully our government will cover them under the same umbrella of armed forces and they can return to the armed forces, to their units. I would like to say that our country needs a very strong military and that our Afghans have, that have received trainings, they will be part of our uh, military force, including our own forces that they fought with us in the past 20 years and so We will select them based on their um, criteria and competence. In relation to the Constitution, well, once we should allow the government to start its work, and then we will look at the Constitution and other areas of the government, and um, whether to will bring changes or reform it or not. The government will start whether there will be any reforms in the uh, constitution or not. Uh, it should be an Islamic, uh, a strong and 
all-inclusive uh, constitution. This will be done in future. There's so many people that they are in a spin ball deck and they haven't been able to work or live and they can't cross the border. Have you spoken with the government of Pakistan uh, in relation to these people that they cannot move? I should say that uh, our Afghans have had uh, problems um, on the crossing points of the borders uh, recently, especially in particularly in Chaman and Torham. We have constantly asked our um, 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 forces to not block the crossing points, but because they are people that they travel, they're travelers, they're uh, migrants, they need to travel. But uh, there was a delegation in Kabul a few days ago. They mentioned a few points that because prisons have been really prisoners have been released from prisons, and for that reason they have closed the borders to stop criminals going out of Afghanistan into those countries. This was one point. The second point is that there should be a check and a system in place to be able to check people's documents and passports, whether they are legitimately traveling to uh, neighboring countries or not. Criminals should not take advantage of this situation and cross the border into other countries or come into the country. Because these routes are used by normal people, by ordinary people, and uh, business people. And for this reason, uh, there has been problems uh, for the people not being able to cross the crossing points. Before, um, also, you had good relations with China. Will you still keep your relationships with the China? First of all, um, hopefully our relationship with uh, all our neighbors will be a very good and sound and strong relationship. We want Afghanistan to take advantage of their um, economical and financial growth as well. So their cooperation is vital for survival of Afghanistan. And for this reason, China should cooperate with Afghans, with our government, and we want to establish a good relationship with them. That project which belongs to Afghanistan, between Afghanistan and China, we will do our best to fulfill it in the best way. And we're just waiting for uh, security. There are so many projects. They are all waiting for. They are all waiting for uh, uh, peace and uh, security to be established. The, the, the electricity line, the pipe, the gas pipeline project, the circular um, road. They are all waiting for security, and that will be implemented. Singapore. Reporter from Singapore.
Jumat ke Wolis? Jumat ke Wolis. I have a question about the demonstrations that the last day committed by Afghan women. To your mind, do they have the right to speak their mind and be on the same level, on every level in the society today? Uh, and will you stop further demonstrations from happening? Marana, do you watch Tera Ras Kabul ke zilo kazo zawrat pidi wal? Do you pordan ji staso lagat sa de ayah? Do you pordan ji pata se wadri ke awya ham jadi dah kulu patra ban di kawal. Awal kuda wam si First of all, the country is just out of a very crisis situation. At the moment, there's, there can be some protests and demonstrations by women or any other group. The situation was disrupted and also it was bad for the security and safety of the uh, capital. Uh, but, but because all parts of the government is not uh, functional at the moment, um, once the government is announced, uh, if there are any protests or any demands that would be addressed in due time. If you're just joining us, uh, we were just watching a media briefing by the Taliban, uh, who have announced that they are in complete control of the Afghan province of Panjshir. That's the uh, uh, the valley north of the capital, Kabul, uh, where there's been a lot of fighting going on, the final pocket of territory which had remained outside Taliban rule. Uh, the spokesman uh, went on to say uh, that the Taliban had tried to uh, negotiate, uh, but the resistance uh, gave negative answers, uh, re referring there to the uh, National Resistance Front of Afghanistan, the NRF, uh, who had been fighting with the Taliban in that valley. Uh, he also said uh, they would treat the people of uh, that valley no differently and would appoint uh, uh, Panjshir residents uh, in various positions. Uh, in the uh, in that valley, uh, and no civilian casualties were taken in the fighting. Uh, a couple of questions asked by members of the uh, media there about uh, when we're expected to hear about uh, a government being announced, and he said uh, they wanted to do the job properly and that they wouldn't announce the government till Friday, but it would be an all-inclusive government. Uh, he also talked about Kabul airport and the fact that uh, it had been badly damaged, um, and, but they did expect international flights to resume soon. Let's go to our correspondent, Charles Stratford, who is in Kabul, who was also listening in uh, to that press conference by Zabihullah Mujahid, the Taliban spokesman. Uh, so what stood out for you uh, in that press conference? Because uh, up till now, the NRF have been denying uh, these claims that they have lost the valley. Uh, what is your understanding now of the situation? Well, certainly about two, two, two and a half hours ago, there was a tweet put out by the NRF saying that uh, there were small pockets of resistance ongoing. But I think, by and large, um, it's, it's widely understood now, certainly according to that very comprehensive um, and wide-ranging press conference by Zabihullah Mujahid, um, giving a lot of details there 
about what's happened in the last 24 hours. Um, you know, we've got to take the Taliban's uh, at face value here, and he went into some, some detail, saying that, uh, according to him, no civilians had been hurt. He said that the leadership of, uh, a lot of the leadership of the Panjshiris, the NRF, were out of the country. Specifically, he mentioned the former Vice President, Amrullah Saleh, who we knew, or we, we, we believed, was in the valley until recently, saying that he had escaped to Tajikistan. And um, the Taliban spokesperson there saying, look, these... The, these this leadership, Panjshiris in general, are welcome to return back to the country and participate in forming a unified country. It was very much a call for unity. Um, as the Taliban grapples with, with, with trying to bring political stability, as it grapples with trying to get not only national legitimacy, but obviously legitimacy on the international stage as well. We have heard so far, other than that simple statement put out, as I say, which was a tweet from the NRF, we've had um, very little information coming out of, out of the Panjshir Valley because, of course, communication was cut off, electricity was cut off. Uh, the Taliban spokesperson, Mujahid, saying that there had been food shortages in the valley as well. He said that the Taliban were going to um, provide food. He said that the electricity was going to be put back on. Um, and he said that uh, Panjshiris should be treated with just as much respect as anybody else in this country. So, uh, very much the Taliban reaching out um, and, and, and trying to put their fears at rest. But as yet, as I say, we've had no formal statement that we can confirm as being made by the leadership or any remnants of the leadership that may or may not exist in this country of the NRF. We've had no response to that. Um, but uh, a telling press conference with so many different topics covered. Um, he mentioned the airport, as you say, and he thanked the Qataris and, 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 and the Turks for being very instrumental and on the ground, seemingly trying to get the airport up and running as quickly as possible. He, he reached out to the international community saying, please let in such the vital amount of humanitarian aid that the country needs to recover when we understand that around half the population, according to the UN, needs that aid. Um, he spoke about the economy, he spoke about the neighbours and the importance of borders being open, but the fact that the Taliban are very wary, so they say, of allowing criminals, what he described as criminals, in and out of the country. So many topics covered there, but yes, much of today's emphasis certainly on this, what would be historical news if indeed the Taliban have taken full control of the Panjshir Valley. Many thanks for that. Uh, our correspondent Charles Strafford there for us in Kabul. No doubt we will speak again.